and I will turn on my mic and then call us to order again. Uh, sitting in for the mayor this evening, we wish him the best. He's uh, going through a couple of tough weeks here, so prayers for him and his family. Uh, with that, I believe Councilman Emerson will lead us uh, in the prayer. Please stand. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, for tonight's invocation, I'd like to introduce Reagan Emerson. <coughs> Reagan is a 2018 graduate of Shawnee Heights High School, where she uh, lettered in track and cross country and went to state in both those. She's also a member of the state championship 5A cheerleading team. Mm -hmm. She then went on to, I should know most of this. She then went on to Cloud County, where she ran cross country and finished up at Washburn. Uh, she's getting married uh, next October to her fiance in the audience tonight, Austin Beckwith. So, Reagan, please proceed. Thank you. Our Father in Heaven, as this body gathers tonight to discuss matters important to our community, I ask that we take a moment to reflect on the responsibilities they bear and the impact of their decisions. May their discussions be guided by your wisdom and compassion. In our thoughts and prayers, we remember Maya Padilla and his family who are mourning the loss of his mother. May they find strength and comfort during this difficult time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. We will move to the roll call. City Clerk. All right, Mayor Padilla is absent, so Deputy Mayor Dobler. Here. Council Members Hiller. Here. Valdivia Acala. Here. Ortiz. Here. Emerson. Here. Kale. Here. Nager. Here. Duncan. Here. And Hofer. Here. We have nine present. Thank you. We'll move to item number two, which is appointments. The clerk will read. A is a board appointment recommending the reappointment of Kelly Major Kurth to the Topeka Sustainability Advisory Board for a term ending December 22, 2025. B is a board appointment recommending the reappointment of Cassandra Taylor to the Topeka Landmarks Commission for a term ending December 31, 2026. Item C, D, E, and F are board appointments recommending um, appointments to the Topeka Tourism Business Improvement District Advisory Board for the reappointments of Dean Patel, Kurt Yun, and Robert Bergquist, and the appointment of John Gatches to the, uh, for a term ending December 31, 2025. Thank you. You've heard the uh, appointments. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. We have a motion by Councilman Councilwoman Hiller, a second by Councilman Emerson. Uh, let's have the vote, please. Council members Hofer? Yes. Hiller? Yes. Valdivia Acla? Yes. Ortiz? Yes. Emerson? Yes. Kale? Yes. Nager? Yes. Deputy Mayor Dobler? Yes. And Council Member Duncan? Yes. All right, we have nine yes, the motion carries. Thank you. We will move on to item number three, presentations. Um, our, first, our first and only presentation is a winter operations update. Uh, City Manager? This presentation is an update on our winter operations, and Tony um, Trower and Braxton will lead this discussion. Okay. Good evening, Deputy Mayor and the Council and City Manager. Um, just like to give a quick update on opera uh, updated operations for 23 and 24. Um, first thing I'd like to say is I'm very proud of our employees for that snowstorm we had the 25th and 26th of November. Um, I thought they did a hell of a job. Um, we started about three o'clock on Saturday and had all the arterials and collectors back to and emergency routes back to normal conditions within 24 hours. So I thought they did a great job. Um, preparation. So start of September, um, 
All of our equipment runs through the fleet department and they will check out all the spreaders, the chains, all that, and the plows and the bits. <clears throat> and then we also, that's when the management team and I sit down and we go through the snow plan and start putting employees and trucks in each zone. And each one of our snow zones has two trucks in each one of them. We also hold a snow training um, in September, 1st of October. Um, there's an in-classroom for new employees. It's a full day in-classroom training. And then uh, veteran employees is a half a day. And then we also have a, a plow driving course that all employees attend and uh, have to go through. This year we held two trainings, um, one September 19th to the 22nd. And then we held another one in November on the 14th to the 16th because we had 12 new employees that we wanted to run through the snow training prior to this winter. Um, so when a forecast, when they're forecasting snow, we're, we watch several different forecasts and make our plan. I mean, we got five or six different ones that we operate off of to move forward. When we know a snow event's moving in, we put our employees on standby 12 hours. They work 12 hour shifts until that snow event's over. Um, Pre-treatment, um, we're always looking at that forecast to see what they're predicting. Um, is it gonna be rain, sleet, snow? That all depends on what we're gonna do for pre-treatment. But if at all possible now, we will be moving forward, or we are moving forward with pre-treating all bridges, arterials, and collectors before every storm. Uh, so we have 14 zones. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, there's two, two operators and trucks in each zone. And each one of those zones, they are in that zone for the winter. Unless they get done during a snowstorm, then we'll move them to another area if needed. Right now we're running five to seven cycle times in that zone in a 12 hour period. So they're just staying in that zone constantly going until that road's back to normal conditions. Um, the collectors, emergency and arterials are first, but 90% of our collectors are tied to those emergency routes. So the way our zones are set up, we're having them run that collectors at the same time. So they're covering everything. Um, residential routes aren't treated unless six inches of snow or more and directed by the city manager. Um, this process will continue. All emergency arterials and collector routes will be back to normal conditions before we stop our snow event. Um, brine application. So we bought our salt brine maker last year. It is up and running. Um, we've used it prior to this, that first storm. Um, so we did pre-treat all bridges and arterials and collectors and hot spots, and that totals 581 lane miles when we do all of those. So going to that brine instead of granular salt, we're using 50 pounds of salt per lane mile instead of 200 pounds of uh, granular salt per lane mile. So using the liquid, that cost is $2 per lane mile for brine versus $8 for the rock salt. Um, the reduction of 150 pounds of salt per lane mile is $6 or a savings of $3,486 per pass on arterials and collectors. Um, using the brine reduces 150 pounds of rock salt per lane mile, which uh, greatly reduces the damage to our streets and environmental impacts. And then during a storm, if uh, anybody from the public has any anything, they can call the call center at 368-3111 or the City Street Department at 368-3803. Uh, now I'd stand for any questions. Thank you, Mr. Trier. I, uh, I'll start, not, not a question, just a comment. I've been involved with public works off and on since uh, a long time ago. And uh, I'll tell you what, I've never seen the streets cleared as quickly as they were in the snow event. I understand we had over seven inches and really a record for the month of November. Maybe not a record, but it's been like 100 and 130 years or so. Um, just a fantastic job. I was out early Sunday morning. I had to, to go somewhere, and I was just amazed that uh, the, the streets had been addressed and were easily passable, and I heard a lot of positive comments. So appreciate what you and your crews uh, did. We, I think we all appreciate it. Any other comments? Councilwoman Hiller? What he said. <laughs> um, it was really tremendous, and we have gone back and forth for years about what the standards should be, what the process should be, all those kinds of things, and it really does seem like you've got it nailed. Appreciate well, thank it you. a lot. I'll pass that along to our team. Great. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we will move on to item number four, consent agenda. The clerk will read. A is a contract between the City of Topeka and Coverage One, Inc. in an amount not to exceed $58,611.19 for consulting services. B is a resolution introduced by Deputy Mayor Do Neil Dobler canceling governing body meetings for calendar year 2024. C is an ordinance introduced by Interim City Manager Richard Neinstead, allowing and approving city expenditures for the period of September 30 to October 27, 2023, and enumerating said expenditures therein. D is approval of an employment contract agreement between the City of Topeka and Richard Neinstead to serve as Interim City Manager for the City of Topeka until such time a permanent City Manager commences employment. E are minutes of the regular meeting of November 21, 2023, and there is a list of cereal malt beverage license applications, and staff is recommending approval. Very good. You've heard the consent agenda. Is there a motion? Mm -hmm. I have a motion for approval by Councilwoman Nager, uh, second by Councilman Kell, and the city clerk will take the roll, please. Councilman Bruce Hiller. Yes. Valdivia Acala. Yes. Ortiz. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Kale. Yes. Nager. Yes. Deputy Mayor Dobler. Yes. Councilmember Duncan. Yes. And Hofer. Yes. We have nine yes. The motion carries. All right. We will move on to item number five, action items. Item 5A, the clerk will read. A is approval of the Alcohol and Drug Abuse Advisory Council funding recommendation in the amount of $670,534 for the City of Topeka 2024 Special Alcohol and Drug Program Fund. City Manager. Mayor and Governing Body, uh, we, we, de we deferred this from November 14th uh, to give staff some extra time to work on what actually our process is. And uh, this is a liquor tax that the city receives by the state of Kansas. And Kansas statute requires that one third of the proceeds be deposited in the city's special alcohol and drug program fund. And this is where these funds come from. So I will turn it over to Rihanna Friedman and Carrie um, Higgins. All right, good evening. So this is a follow up from our previous meeting. Um, we've shared with you the scoring summary for the council recommendations. We also sent out um, an FAQ that detailed what the process was, how applications are scored, and then also who can be on the re review committee. Um, we also talked a little bit about the process improvement that we are working on. Uh, myself and the executive committee have met several times and we will continue to meet to update the bylaws. We're working on updating and creating additional policies and procedures. Um, we are updating the RFP. We have added um, some mandatory trainings into the process um, for the review committee, also for any applicants um, in regards to outputs and outcomes. Um, and then we've been working with um, legal to um, include the COMA training for all members as well. So we are working on ensuring that we have a better process in place for next year so that things um, go more smoothly. And we are, um, as I've met with the, the executive committee, they have um, stressed that they would like to keep the process for the review committee with the SAD council versus having it moved elsewhere. They feel like um, all of these processes that we are updating, the RFP, the policies and procedures, all of that will then go before the entire SAD council for approval before um, they are put into place and they feel confident that with these changes that we are making that um, they would like to keep that process within their committee, the council as a whole, um, and move forward that way. Um, so with that, we are um, seeking approval for the funding recommendations and I would be happy to stand for any questions. All right, I do have two uh, people signed up for public comment. I believe we'll do public comment first and then uh, take questions from the council. So the first speaker, um, Henry McClure. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Hey, Neil. Talking about something I know for once. Um, I was really disappointed that 
nobody showed up last time. The committee of one comment was really interesting. It's easier to get everything done when only one person shows up on the committee. Um, half a win and is showing up. And I made a public open records request. I asked Mary Thomas. I asked uh, county commissioner who's on this committee. And <laughs> yeah, I don't think there is one. But that aside, I, uh, I learned something really very interesting from Mary Thomas that actually some of the people that were on that list, and, and if you don't know who Mary Thomas is, she's with the CRC, which maybe somebody else didn't know. I know you know. But, uh, and, and I found out something very interesting that some of the people that were on this list here could have applied over there for the same funds. I also found out what, what was really interesting, the money that she manages on behalf of the county, she only charges 1% and has modest offices. And what, it broke my heart. It really broke my heart here in, uh, you know, watching somebody break down over their, uh, you know, their goodwill that, that might go away. They're, they're doing everything they can. The interesting thing about Alcoholics Anonymous is they don't want your money because they don't want you telling them what to do. But I've been in some AA meetings, and I'll tell you, you'll look over and you'll say, you know what, that guy isn't going to get any help here. You know, that guy needs more help than AA can provide. And that's why I think that these programs are just so important. Um, and I've got, I've got no problem. <laughs> you all know, I'm, I've known them forever that I've been an alcoholic. And, um, man, and I love to do drugs, but not today. Yeah, I got eight and a half years clean and sober. Transcended really more than a, it was an awakening to live your life better. And if you've got a chance at a second life, you really become cognizant of what you do with your time. You don't want to waste your time or go through life wasted anymore. But what I really think that we have to do, we have to come up with a way to get more funds. You know, for me, look, there's, there's, um, there's no amount of money you can throw at a problem or to get a guy to quit drinking or a person, whatever. No matter how much you throw out, if they don't want to do it themselves. But if they'll show up to different places and tr keep trying to get help, we got to make sure there's money for there. And I'm telling you, we've got to, uh, we've got to get our legislature to raise the tax because drug addicts will pay whatever it costs. We'll pay the going rate to get what we want. There is no tax going to be <laughs> tax us out of getting hammered. You know, if that's our goal. Um, you know, this is a subject. This is a real subject that. Uh, uh, and I hope tonight that however this thing turns out, you don't defer funding it at certain levels, whatever. You know, like Spencer said last week, let's, uh, let's let the pain, you know, let's, <laughs> let's live with the pain of last time. But uh, we've got to find a way to get more funds to fund these projects, whether it's voluntary or looking at other projects that we can cut. You need more time, Henry? I don't know. Uh, I'd take one minute. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 One minute, Henry. The one thing, the one thing that I really, uh, that I was talking to some others and they didn't show up tonight, but we got to get down to the root cause of homelessness. And we got to get down to the root cause of a better place to live. You know, the minute we make Topeka like a tourist town to when people come through our community and say, I want to live there, they were nice. They were fun. This was a good place to go, a good place to visit. I wouldn't mind staying here. But when we can start looking at, at alcoholism and drug addiction being the root cause of homeless, homelessness, we've got to tie it all together with a ribbon. And we've got to do everything we can as a community to, um, to let people, those that are willing to show up, 
show up. And I, I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Uh, next speaker, Mandy. Mandy. Chikansky. Thank you. Oh, she's not speaking. Okay. All right. Uh, open to questions from the council. We'll go with uh, Spencer and then Councilwoman Hiller. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, I alluded to this a few weeks ago, so I'll just reiterate and then I'm going to make a suggestion here. Um, I've always trusted this process the prior years. Sometimes hiccups happen, um, and this year I just think some hiccups happened, and it really was no one's specific fault. It was sort of a perfect storm of, of things happening at once. City manager is no longer with us. The department head was no longer with us. The longtime chair of that committee had health issues that uh, indicated he needed to step back. And because of that, the process didn't go as it traditionally has. Literally nobody's fault. Um, having said that, it didn't go, I don't think, the way it's it, it was 100% supposed to. And that's the reason it comes to us every year for approval, so that we can just do a double check, make sure everything went right. If it didn't, we look at staff and staff has already shown us a very positive way forward to course correct what those hiccups were and, and cure them and move forward. And I'm, I have a lot of trust in what they're proposing, um, but we're the stopgap. And I just don't think it went 100% as planned this year. And so I guess what I'm gonna do is, uh, I think the only deficiency remains the funding for PARs. I think they've indicated that if they could just be at their 2023 levels, that would correct sort of everything else. Everyone else who made a request either got the same level as this 2023 or got their requested amount. The only one who didn't was PARs. So I would like to make a motion to refund, to fund PARs at their 2023 levels. That amounts to roughly $28,000. And I've been told by staff that that money is available and that would not be an issue if we would like to do so. So my motion is to fund PARs at their 2023 levels. Second. All right, we have a motion to second. Uh, Councilwoman Hiller. Um, well, I wanted to echo the, the comments that Councilman Duncan made. Um, if, if the council really wants to go forward with additional funding, my understanding is that staff already found an additional $40,000 to make the difference between what we saw at first and what was discussed later, um, what the first re recommendations were. Um, I too see the, the loss of a longtime leader and, and a system that worked for years and years and years having, as Councilman Duncan says, a hiccup. Um, it sounds like even though when they were here before, it sounded like everybody quit and there was only one person left and so on, that with the staff and the leadership of the member agencies that there's been a whole lot of conversation and pulled that system back together. And I really appreciate that work. That's what we need you all <laughs> Four, but it sounds like they are wrapping their, their arms around um, getting that system back in place. It looks like they've taken off the table for the time being anyway, the idea that we might need to get somebody else to do it, but instead they want to get that done themselves and bring it back in order. Um, I don't know if anybody else asked for it, but I did ask go ahead and ask for the scores. And there were serious issues with the way that, with, with, the, with the scores. Um, on the agency that has had some concerns. Uh, I'm sure they've learned a lot from that as well. Um, but I, I was ready to make a motion to go with the staff's recommendation. Um, I'm not gonna offer a substitute at this point if Councilman Duncan wants to change that, that's fine. I see he's got his hand up, but that was where I was coming from walking into the meeting. Thank you. Thanks, if I could, uh, just a question. Where's the, where would the additional funding come from? I I will let finance answer that question because I don't think it's available from the tax. Uh, it will most likely come from the general fund, sir. Okay, from reserves. Right. All right. Thank you, Freddie. <coughs> that's that's Any other questions? Yeah, I'll get to it. Any other questions here? All right. Uh, 
Councilman Duncan. So can I get a, then can staff give us a clarification? Was my motion different than maybe what you would recommend, i.e. was it, was it, if so, can you explain what the differences are? <laughs> So I, Councilman Duncan, I understand your motion to be to fund PARS at the 2023 funding level. Is that correct? Right. Correct. Yes. Then that's our understanding as well. Okay. Okay. And that's fine. Because I know some different amounts were bandied about as we worked through it. So, okay. So then I'll let my motion stand. Okay. Perfect. No, no reason to change it. Then. Thank you. Councilman Emerson. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, and I'm inclined to support this. My only question, though, is what is the amount? I guess it's one... So it'd be 169 minus 131, and then 71, basically minus 45. So the difference of the amount would be an additional $25,393. And that's the difference of, if you're looking in the final funding recommendation column, oh. versus the 2023 funded. Is it, I'm sorry, is this page like 173 of the, uh, oh. or is it? Um, is it? Is it the chart that looks like this? Yes. yes. So. If, if I may, I guess, um, real quick, so it's just the two PARS line items, right? Correct. One is 169.303, what they were last year, right? Yep. And the committee recommended 131.613, so isn't that like 28,000? So it, yeah, it's slightly confusing. So then they appealed their application, and then the funding was raised to the final funding recommendation, the yellow column of 150. Oh, okay, okay, yep. okay. Yep. Okay, no problem then. Okay, I'm, I'm good with the 28,000. Okay, thank you. All right, any other questions from the council? Um, I'd suggest we get a read back of the motion, please. So council member Duncan made the motion seconded by Kill. It was moved to fund PARS at the 2023 level. That amount is $25,393. Right. All right, and everybody else funded at the committee's, re the level of the committee's recommendation. And then approve as amended. So, okay. All right. Uh, clerk will take the roll, please. Okay. Uh, Council members Valdivia Acla? Yes. Ortiz? Yes. Emerson? Yes. Kale? Yes. Nager? Yes. Deputy Mayor Dobler? Yes. Council members Duncan? Yes. Hofer? Yes. And Hiller? Yes. All right, we have nine yes. The motion carries. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your work. All right, we will move on to item 5B. Uh, the clerk will read. B is a resolution introduced by Interim City Manager Richard Neinstead approving the 2024 Topeka Dreams Grants. City Manager. So, Mayor and Governing Body, um, this, if you approve this, it authorizes $200,000 for the Topeka Dreams Grant. 2024 Neighborhood Improvement Initiatives Program. And for the public, what that means is this is money that you put back into um, your neighborhood areas to help with special projects. And I will turn this over to Ornester and Monique to talk more about this. Thank you, Richard. Good evening, uh, Vice Mayor, Governing Body members. Um, this is a follow-up uh, presentation, and we're asking for your approval uh, for the DREAMS uh, 2024 uh, projects as presented. It is under budget. Uh, the uh, remaining um, uh, uh, funds uh, not identified or allocated for some of these projects will be used as contingency. Um, we do have one more item uh, as an update related to this project, and I'll let our Director of Community Engagement uh, provide that to you. Season's greetings. Community Engagement wanted to share with you that we will be hosting a DREAMS 2021 through 2023 program debrief meeting with neighborhood leaders to discuss with both staff and then NIA's perspectives on the DREAMS program process over the last three years. The agenda will consist of what's working, what's not working, and asking for changes uh, and ideas to improve the program going forward. That meeting will be held on Wednesday, January the 17th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Holiday Building. It will be a hybrid meeting to ensure that everyone will be able to participate either online or in person. So we're looking forward to obtaining information to see what the neighborhoods are thinking of. Great. With that, uh, I don't have any additions to the prior presentation, uh, but we're happy to entertain any questions. 
All right, we do have uh, one person signed up to speak, uh, Mr. Michael Bell on Zoom, I believe. <clears throat> Mr. Bell? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Can you hear me? We sure can. Okay, very good. Um, good evening. My name is Michael Bell. I'm the <coughs> president of the Tennessee Town Neighborhood Improvement Association. And I appear before you all tonight to endorse the uh, CAC recommendations uh, regarding the 2024 Dreams 3 programming. I'll try to answer any questions that you might have about Tennessee Town's proposal that I wrote. And I wanted to thank the 12 individuals and groups who submitted support letters for our proposal. That was greatly appreciated. And finally, happy holidays. Thank you, Mr. Bell. You do have a few minutes left. Would you mind uh, talking just a minute about the <clears throat> King's Court Park improvements in Tennessee Town? Sure. Uh, generally speaking, uh, the basketball complex and playground uh, complex at Southwest Lincoln and Munson Streets um, has kind of become a uh, central part of our neighborhood. Uh, probably most famously, uh, every year there is a, a basketball tournament, citywide basketball tournament staged there the first Saturday in August. But uh, the basketball courts get to use uh, throughout the year, weather permitting, of course. And uh, we also tied in uh, a sign uh, recognizing not only uh, the um, basketball and playground complex, but also the uh, Heritage House uh, Black History Museum directly north of the um, complex um, that uh, celebrates black history in Topeka. Very good. Thank you for that. Uh, we appreciate your work and the work of all, all the NIAs. Are there any uh, questions or comments from the council? All right, seeing none, I'd entertain a motion. Have a motion, is there a second? Second. All right, <laughs> motion by Councilwoman Nager, second by Councilman Emerson. The uh, clerk will take the vote, please. Council members Ortiz? Yes. Emerson? Yes. Hale? Yes. Nager? Yes. Deputy Mayor mm -hmm. Dobler? Yes. Council members Duncan? Yes. Hofer? Yes. Hiller? Yes. And Valdivia Acla? Yes. We have nine yes, the motion carries. Very good. We will move to item 5C and the clerk will read. Thank you, Monique and Ernesto. C is a resolution introduced by interim city manager Richard Neinstead amending the project list approved by resolution number 9392 to revise the mill and overlay project list for 2023 citywide half cent sales tax projects. City manager. Mayor and governing body. If you approve this resolution, it would remove the project on Southwest 28th Street from 28th Terrace, Brooklyn, with Dean, Norwood, and add the projects on Southwest Avenue, uh, Randolph, from Southwest 29 to Southwest 33rd, and from Southwest 33rd from Burlingame to Southwest McVicker Court, and I'll let Braxton walk through that map with you. City manager hit it on the head. That's exactly what we're doing. The reason for this is the original streets that we had planned, the water department is going to be doing some water line replacement. Um, I um, am adverse to spending money to do a mill and overlay to have it ripped up and to have water lines put down. So we've chosen some other streets. And with that, I'll gladly stand for any questions. Questions from the body? Councilman Emerson. Thank you, Dep Deputy Mayor. Uh, not really a question, uh, Mr. Coppola. I just really appreciate that you guys aren't just blindly letting projects. You're actually going out and saying, hey, you know, something else is happening here in six months. Let's shift the money over here. So I, I really appreciate you guys doing that. Thank you. Yes, we're uh, great coordination between utilities and public works. Thank you very much. Uh, seeing no further questions, I would entertain a motion. Motion approved. Second. 
Motion by Councilman Kell, second by Councilman Emerson. Uh, the clerk will take the roll. Please. Council members Emerson? Yes. Kell? Yes. Nager? Yes. Deputy Mayor Dobler? Yes. Council members Duncan? Yes. Hofer? Yes. Hiller? Yes. Valdivia Akla? Yes. And Ortiz? Yes. We have nine yes. Motion carries. Thank you. We will move to item 5D. The clerk will read. D is a resolution introduced by the members of the Public Infrastructure Co Committee comprised of Council Members Tony Emerson, Neil Dobler, and Michelle Hofer, re recommending approval of project number 841097, phase four for street improvement on River Road. City Manager. I will defer to Council Member uh, Emerson, who is the chair of the Public Infrastructure Committee, and Braxton Copley, who is Public Works Director. And I will in turn uh, defer to Mr. Copley. Thank you. <laughs> We've identified that River Road um, has uh, a PCI, a pavement condition index, that warrants a mill and overlay with some areas of full depth pavement placement. Given the fact that we have the Port Quincy Viaduct project that's going to be going in 2025, we recognize that that is going to become a heavy detour route. So we want to jump in in 2024 do the mill and overlay with the full depth uh, patching as needed to get this done and buttoned up before the PQV starts. With that, I would uh, gladly stand for any questions and ask for approval of the resolution. All right, any questions, Councilwoman? Not so much question as just commentary. I think that how Braxton always hears what a good job he's doing, but <laughs> just saying it again, but you know, um, Karen, or Councilwoman Hiller and I kind of share that whole river road line. Um, I can tell you that it is in some desperate need of some care, some TLC, which I think is what we can anticipate. Who knows what it's gonna look like with the highly trafficked area that we anticipate it's going to become, which is you know what your foresight was, uh, was seeking to address, but um, looking forward to have, you know, getting more information out to the folks in, in Oakland and across the district. And just want to say uh, thank you for being proactive on this, Braxton. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, Mr. Copley, maybe you could take just a couple of minutes and, and talk a little bit about the, uh, the schedule, the length of time, uh, detours, road closures, those type of things. It is a important route for a lot of a lot of people in that part of town uh, and I use it a couple times a month so I will I'm sure I'm going to drive up there and see the barricade some Saturday <laughs> afternoon at, and uh, then I'll be trying to find my way around so if you could just just highlight a couple of the uh, a little bit about the project please. yeah absolutely so currently uh, the project is um, in front of the core of engineers for approval because it is immediately approximate to their to the levy unit which is why we are being very careful in terms of limiting the scope of this to a mill and overlay with some full depth repairs um, we anticipate getting it out to bid uh, first part of the year typically we'd like to have our projects on the street for at least 30 days to give contractors an ample opportunity to review and to submit bids so we're looking at um, early spring march april to get the contract award at which time that we have a contractor on site we will go ahead and schedule a public meeting it is very important to have the contractors at those public meetings because as um, our design engineer may think this is how i would build it the contractor may take an entirely different look and say no i want to do it from this end to that end this project unfortunately is going to require a full closure of River Road to be able to do this, to be able to safely do the work. Otherwise, it would take for um, ex too long. Uh, we're anticipating three to four months in terms of the total time of the project. So best case scenario is we get started in May after the batch plants are open and we get through the worst of our spring weather and then run it through the summer to be able to have it buttoned up by, by the fall. Um, and so that that would be the schedule that I would anticipate. All right. Thank you very much. Any other questions? All right. Would entertain a motion? Neil. Oh, sorry, Councilwoman Hiller. Just a quick comment. I, I just um, 
I represent District 1, which has had the utility relocates for Pole Quincy Viaduct up, and I just want to compliment Public Works and Utilities for those public hearings and encourage everybody on the council as well as people that are watching that when the notice of these public information sessions comes up to think about whether you personally use the road or who does it because for instance for me when they close first street at topeka boulevard it affects traffic all the way to mcvicker and back and the and the other way and so if people for instance when the when the time comes for river road to go ahead and have anybody you can think of that uses that at all, at all, that might have some thoughts about the best way to do it. Full closure is full closure, um, but the rerouting and, and where we need to have the signs so that people who regularly use any any road can, can find out in a timely manner and get themselves rerouted. That closure is gonna be happening at the same time that five other utility projects between Polk Street and Adams are happening to move utilities. It's going to be a mess in that riverfront area, but it has to happen. So just wanted to compliment, again, the invitations. People have sent them out just as broadly as they can imagine and with some input. But the, the hearings have been useful. People have had good ideas and really good feedback. So thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, would entertain a motion. All right, we have a motion to approve by Councilwoman Valdivia Alcala, a second by Councilwoman Hofer. The clerk will read or will take the roll, please. Council members Kell? Yes. Nager? Yes. Deputy Mayor Dobler? Yes. Council members Duncan? Yes. Hofer? Yes. Hiller? Yes. Valdivia Alcala? Yes. Ortiz? Yes. And Emerson? Yes. All right, we have nine yes. The motion carries. Thank you. We'll move to item 5E. The clerk will read. E is a resolution introduced by the Public Infrastructure Committee comprised of Council Members Tony Emerson, Neil Dobler, and Michelle Hofer recommending approval of the revised project budgets for two traffic signal projects revising resolution number 9471. Thank you. City Manager. Uh, Mayor and Governing Body, if you approve this, it will authorize funding of traffic signal projects exceeding 250,000. And um, I would defer again to council member Tony Emerson, who is chair of the Public Infrastructure Committee. Mr. Copley. Absolutely, thank you for the opportunity. These projects were initially approved by the governing body. We had project <laughs> budgets of approximately $300,000 for both of these. For many, many years, two hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand dollars allowed us to do a signalized intersection. We actually put the project out for Sixth and Golden to bid. The low bid came in substantially over what our project budget was. Uh, the end result of that is that we need to seek your approval to increase those project budgets. And then what we're going to have to do internally, and that we have done, is that we've reprioritized and are having to push out some projects because now uh, an intersection is approximately $600,000 to, to signalize. Uh, our program is about $1.2 million a year, so that's about two intersections. So we took a look at the next three years and we've reprioritized those. The first, first resolution is to increase the project budgets of the two that had been previously approved. The next resolution will be to approve project budgets for the next three that we have in the hopper for uh, design for uh, signalization, and I will gladly stand for any questions. Uh, when you say the next one, that's item 5F, so yes, you're speaking yep. in advance of that. Thank you, Mr. Copley. Yes. Any questions? Councilwoman Hiller? Just one comment again, and that is that it doesn't necessarily seem to come before us, but I want to say that I appreciate the fact that you've been removing some of the signals around town, which simply takes them out of that rotation and in the places where you've removed them so far, um, it doesn't seem like we're hurting without them. So thank you for that. Of course, and if I may comment, sir. Um, when we engage a consultant to look at it, the very first thing that we do is we have them review the traffic counts and to review whether that signal is warranted. Um, in the case of 7th and Quincy, that signal was not warranted. We've already done the study for the next phase, which is Quincy 8th to 10th, and the signal at 9th and Quincy 
is not warranted. So we will be removing that signal as well because it, it is not in our best interest given the cost of these limited funds that we have to maintain unwarranted signals. Seems like we had a little help uh, removing a signal at was it six, in, six in Kansas. I got him to smile. All right. Unfortunately, that one is warranted, as you, as you will notice if you're standing in the line of cars in the morning trying to get through that intersection. So, yes, we will. We are figuring out a plan to, to get a temporary pull up to keep that get that signal back functioning. Thank you. Appreciate that. Any other questions, uh, Councilwoman? I've got one and I'd forgotten it the other day. Is there a long lead time on getting the uh, poles, the lights, everything, or is it something that's kind of a stock item now? No, three to four months is what we're seeing. Okay, thank you. All right, entertain a motion. All right, motion by Councilwoman Hofer, second by Councilwoman Nager. Uh, the Clerk will read or will take the roll, please. Council members Nager? Yes. Deputy Mayor Dobler? Yes. Council members Duncan? Yes. Hofer? Yes. Hiller? Yes. Baldi Viacla? Yes. Ortiz? Yes. Emerson? Yes. And Kell? Yes. All right, we have nine yes. The motion carries. Thank you. We'll move to item 5F. The clerk will read. F is a resolution introduced by the members of the Public Infrastructure Committee comprised of Council Members Tony Emerson, Neil Dobler, and Michelle Hofer recommending approval of three traffic signal replacement projects. City Manager, we've already had discussion. Shall we just move along? Uh, yes, I would recommend that, Mayor and Governing Body. Motion to approve. We have a motion and a second. Motion by Councilman Emerson, second by Councilwoman Hofer. The clerk will take the roll. Deputy Mayor Dobler? Yes. Council Members Duncan? Yes. Hofer? Yes. Hiller? Yes. Valdivia Akla? Yes. Ortiz? Yes. Emerson? Yes. Kale? Yes. And Nager? Yes. We have nine yes. The motion carries. Thank you. We will look, move to the last item, uh, item 5G. The clerk will read. G is an ordinance introduced by Interim City Manager Richard Neinstead concerning adoption of the 2021 International Residential Code, amending and repealing several sections of Chapter 1455 of the Topeka Municipal Code. City Manager. Um, Mayor and Governing Body, uh, Richard Faulkner, Development Services Division Director, will answer any questions you have. And if you approve this ordinance, it adopts the 2021 International Residential Code for one and two family dwellings with local amendments. And Mr. Faulkner is on Zoom. Uh, thank you, City Manager. I'm having some difficulty getting my uh, picture to show up. So my video is not showing up. Um, there we go. Uh, yeah, as the council knows, we have several regulations that we use to regulate our construction industry. This is one of those codes. This is, uh, we are amending the residential code, which we are presently using the 2009, uh, which is a code that is substantially out of date with what's going on. So we're looking at adopting the 2021, has been reviewed by a subcommittee uh, of the Building Board of Appeals. Then we took it to the Building Board of Appeals and they recommended a moving forward with it. We also took it to the uh, Policy and Finance Committee and they also recommended that we move forward with it. Uh, I think that it's a code that we need to adopt uh, to make sure we have some current regulations uh, to address the construction industry in our community. And this is a good code. Uh, I stand for any questions that you may have. Thank you, Mr. Faulkner. I believe we did have a presentation on this at the end of October. Uh, is there any questions from the body? Seeing none, yes, Councilwoman. I had a few questions for Mr. Faulkner and he has answered them, but I think I would like to make them public. This is on the, um, the door closure coming off the uh, door going into the garage. And we nailed down a few specifics. Um, one of the first things was, is it a specific door 
because in my old home I had a screen door that had a closure and a regular door and he verified it has to be the solid door between the garage and the inside screen doors don't count I asked him how long um, it would be before it goes into effect and Richard please verify this I believe it's 90 days after this is goes into effect before a homeowner has to or that builder has to put the closure on is that correct yes 90 days after it's published it goes into effect <laughs> any house that's un presently under construction will not have to comply with this uh, any house that goes through remodeling as long as they're not changing that door they won't have to comply with this this is predominantly for uh, if you're taking that door out or if it's a new residence okay I just wanted to get some more specifics because it was something that came up and I thought how much is this going to cost and is it going to be a burden on people building a home it sounds like it's not going to be too much of a burden the basic closure they checked out and thought it would be about thirty dollars although a high-end home I believe it's going to be significantly more but hopefully this won't be an issue but it's something new and I just wanted to make some specific um, comments so people knew that we had really talked about it and discussed it and we weren't just passing it to pass it so it's been talked about quite a bit this week during emails so I just wanted to let you know appreciate that uh, any other comments questions all right thank you mr. Faulkner uh, entertain a motion I have a motion to approve by councilwoman Nager a second by councilman Kell the city clerk will take the roll please council members Duncan yes Hofer yes Hiller yes Valdivia Acla yes Ortiz yes Emerson yes Kale yes Nager yes and Deputy Mayor Dobler yes all right we have nine yes motion carries very good we will move on to item six public comment uh, we do have two folks signed up for public comment the first is Henry McClure <laughs> Nobody mentioned that it's Topeka's birthday. If you give me a minute, today's Topeka's birthday. She didn't want anyone to know how old she was. Well, one minute later, if, if after I talk, I'll sing with you guys. Why not? Happy? I do good with birthday. Public domain. I, <laughs> uh, I just uh, wished Kathleen Sebelius a happy birthday. All right. So, sales is repetition. AA is repetition. So, tonight it's kind of interesting being Topeka's birthday and celebrating birthdays in AA and sobriety. You know, people can't believe, after all my shenanigans, that the other shoe's not going to drop. And that's why I live today. I just, because I enjoy that part of it. And you know, sometimes we have to outlive others to create change. And you don't want to run down Topeka because this is where we're from. I, you know, when Sam McClure was discharged here after the Civil War, a Yankee chaplain, uh, Judge James A. McClure going around integrating the schools. My dad representing Oscar Stauffer and um, me recovering from alcoholism. Okay, I got that going for me. But uh, I'm working on it. But as we celebrate birthdays, and I think about July 13th, 1959 to May 2nd, 2015. And one thing that's been consistent over that time, if we're going to talk about addiction, if we're going to talk about, it's like Topeka is addicted to uh, economic development or Topeka is addicted to hiring outside consultants. It's like um, we, 
we elected you guys to be, you're the, our city fathers, whether you like it or not. And come on, Dad, let's, sometimes we have to be conservative with our money. Um, the fact that you have an outside consultant that does economic development that charges 38% of the money you give them to administer the plan, which I, I don't want to be a bad guy. Let's, let's just say that everything they did, had it, it was good. They had the right spirit. But it didn't achieve the goal, and the goal was to broaden our tax base. So let's just pivot. Let's do something different. Don't, make, don't have guys like me come down here and make it like a resentment. But every time we have a water break, I mean, it's like, um, it's like uh, Topeka growing is like saying, you know, I'm going to quit drinking. You know, we've all, we've all heard that, the drug addicts. We've heard it. I'm going to quit drinking. And we're going to grow the tax base, and we're going to grow the city, and the population is going to grow. You know, when I was born July 13, 59, we had 19,800. And so what happens today to a guy like me that's been around and I got to travel for 18 years, and I've saw, I've seen cities that they do it better, and they do it different. But man, this is our town. It's our hometown. So let's all show up. Let's, and we the people need to come down here and get more involved. It's not your fault. It's our fault for not coming down here. I like uh, Spencer the other day was at a Board of Realtors thing talking about, well, bring forward the resolution. Okay. You know, it's like uh, one thing I do want to challenge this group for before the next JETO meeting, we have hundreds of people that come and look at Topeka. Where's the list of everybody that didn't sign a non-disclosure statement? You good or you need more time? No, I, unless we want to sing. No happy birthday? No. Oh, man. Uh, sorry about that. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I want to talk after the meeting. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. McClure. Mr. Lassley. <clears throat> Mr. Lassley, you've been up here before. You know how the timer works. Yes, sir. Uh, you got your four minutes. All right. All right. Um, I would have preferred to just had a one-on-one -on -one with my councilwoman. You know, I know she's busy, all busy. And I, I don't know how to proceed when it comes to your your ordinances. Do you, do you do I have to make up some kind of duly like they had on the thingy up there, saying what number it was, what it was all about, before it gets voted on, or do it just come up here and say we need a, an ordinance? Uh, in, in my case, that ordinance uh, pertains to the overgrown and uh, old dead and dying trees where I live. Uh, nobody today going to plant soft maple and you know, Chinese elm in between a uh, 20-foot trailer, you know, from one trailer to the next. you got these two huge trees in there, you know. So every night, any time it storms, you're looking to see what, you know, what might happen because it's happened before, you know. And I, I, I would like to, to solve all this. You know, I've, I'm having to make deals I don't like to make with the owners just to get my trees done when I know I should just continue on with the court process and, and sue their butt. But I, uh, if they had an ordinance that said that they had to correct the problem, Correctly, not just trimming and dead wooden, but cut them on down there where they can't be no uh, threat to human life. And that's why it's a public safety issue, no matter how you look at it. And no, nobody, no, nobody seems to think it's important that we have a, such an ordinance. I, 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 can I recommend it? Can I get a vote on it? Uh. Let me ask you first, are you, are you finished speaking here? Because we will, we'll, we'll have a bit of dialogue here if you'd like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Councilwoman? 
number one, Mr. Lastly, I had I had told you that we would be working on an ordinance. It is being worked on and it is being fine tuned between the city attorney Ooh, and myself. Yeah. I let you know that. I just okay. had not called you since then. Also, I would say for what the city has done, the city has gone above and beyond with going in and dealing with that mobile home park that you live in and also going in there and cutting trees that they were not obliged to do, but they did. So unfortunately, ordinances and things of that nature don't just happen. They have to be crafted, and that's the message right. that I had left you. Right. And so the goal is, is that once all of that is finalized, then that is going to become, come before the governing body in either January or February. Okay. It's not that no one cares. Yeah. And I consider myself responsive, and the city has gone above and beyond for everything that they've helped you with. Yeah, so, you have. I, I, okay. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Really, thank you. That's, that's all I have to say. All right. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councilwoman, for that. Uh, we will move on to announcements, and we will start with the city clerk. <laughs> Okay, for the December 12th agenda, we will have two board appointments. We'll have a presentation from the Topeka Fire Department Emergency Medical Response Assessment. Action items include a public hearing and ordinance on the 2023 budget amendments, an ordinance renewing the um, American Medical Response franchise. We will also have an, a resolution for a conditional use permit at 1610 Northwest Tyler for apartments. And then we'll have an ordinance for a planned unit development at 2900 Southeast Kentucky Avenue for parking spaces. And our discussion items can are a common consumption area ordinance and then the Wanamaker Hills Community Improvement District Development Agreement Amendment. All right. Thank you, uh, City Manager. Mayor and Governing Body, thank you. Um, I had the honor this morning, along with uh, Councilwoman Holford, to attend um, seven new officers that have graduated from our police academy. And I want to commend um, Chief Wheels and his staff on the program that they, that they had for these officers and their families. And there was also a father-son um, in there also. So I spoke to the father a little bit, and uh, he was pretty proud, as he should be. So... Thank you for the training you give our officers. Thank you for having a, a, um, a graduation program that involves the families and your staff. So um, <clears throat> I might also mention that last week I was at Kansas Association of City Management out in Dodge City. And if you don't know where that's at, it's close to Colorado. But uh, um, the city received... Public Works received the Kansas City Public Improvement Award for 2023, first place, 50,000 and above population category, City of Topeka for 12th Street, Gage Boulevard to Kansas Avenue. It was presented by the American Council of Engineering Companies of Kansas. The engineering firm is a little known firm that uh, we really don't know, Bartlett and West. And the contractor was uh, Bettis Asphalt and Construction Incorporated. And I had the honor to receive that award and bring it back to our public works director. So I have never in 43 years been in a city that ever got one of those awards. So thank you. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, nice, nice award for the city. All right. Uh, Council comments, and we'll start with Councilman Emerson. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, yeah, w w one of the things we've been noticing a lot of lately has been water main breaks around the city. And um, f first of all, this is not the fault of anyone who's currently on the staff or even the staff of the last 10 years, but uh, we have corrosive soils in Topeka, Kansas, and it will be a crime if we ever put another stick of metal pipe in the ground. So uh, I've been a huge fan of PVC now for a number of years, and especially now. Uh, however, I, I think it's getting to a crisis point where we're spending a, more and more money all the time, and, and utilities are doing a fantastic job. This is not a criticism of utilities at all. They're doing a great job. But, um, much like in the, in the 90s, we did a red water program where for several years we did thousands and thousands of feet of replacements. 
I think that's we're going to need to look at something like that. And obviously, I won't be here to 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 help with that program. But that's something I think next year. I mean, something that needs to be started like yesterday because um, it's it's really gotten bad. We're um, you know we're putting patches on on patches, and it's pretty soon every foot of these pipes will be a a sleeve, and the problem is a sleeve is three or four thousand dollars every time you do it, where you replace you know thirty foot of pipe for that. So. Um, anyway, I, I appreciate everything utilities is going through, but that's something that this council next year or, or even sooner is going to need to come up with. I, in my opinion, again, a program just like we did with Redwater in the 90s. So, thanks. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilman Kill. Uh, just want to commend the staff and, and for helping us with the, when it came to the Social Service Grant Committee the, in the Special Alcohol and Drug Program helping us find a workaround for those, those issues that we came into. Uh, you know, great job on the snow. Make sure you're being aware uh, of city workers out there working the snow. Also, I saw someone working patchwork today. So make sure when you're coming up on uh, city, state, county workers, you're taking your time, making sure they're safe, make sure, sure yourself is safe. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilwoman Nager. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. There are two wonderful things that if you wander into our county parks during the night, you won't actually be in the dark. Um, running until December 30th, the Topeka Zoo is hosting zoo lights again this year. Um, it is a great activity for you and your family, um, no matter what age you are. And like I said, that will be running through the 30th and the times are Sunday through Thursday, five through nine. And um, there will be special hours on Christmas, 6 through 9. And then on the premiere nights, which are Fridays and Saturdays, that's 5 to 10. If you go down to Lake Shawnee, you can go ahead and see Winter Wonderland put on by TARC and um, support that program, support that organization. And they are running until, um, excuse me, December 31st, so until the end of 2023, Monday through Wednesday, 6 to 9, and Thursday through Sunday, 6 to 10. They will be closed to the public on the 11th. So don't make your plans for that night. Go to the zoo that night, but enjoy the holidays. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, Councilman Duncan. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. I'm on Zoom this evening because I'm in Wichita at the Kansas Association of Counties Conference, trying to make sure I'm I guess trying to see what the hens are doing in the hen house, us cities watch, watching over those counties to see what they may be bringing our way. So, so that is why I'm on Zoom this evening. A um, couple of just quick things. The first is, and I, I should have looked up the name of the company. I don't remember it off the top of my head. Um, they, they've completed the houses over on 12th and Topeka Boulevard. They've done some other homes. If you haven't seen them, they look really nice. Those homes were falling apart for many years on that intersection. And that company has gone in there and completely rebuilt them, rehabilitated them. I know they're doing that with some others. So it's nice when we see that happening in, in some of those areas where it looked not so great for, for many years. Um, tomorrow, policy and finance is having a very brief meeting. Blink if you'll miss it maybe um, at one o'clock. But our goal is to get to the governing body, which is on the agenda for next week, a discussion on the common consumption law. Um, won't be any expectation that has to be done by the end of this year, but we want to get it out to everybody so that everyone has plenty of time as we head in the next couple of months to talk about what it's going to look like and give the public plenty of input and time to discuss it. So you're going to see that one, um, that one coming soon. So um, with that, that is all I had this evening. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Council oh, no, that's not oh. true. I had one more thing. Uh, <laughs> I am the representative from this body, governing body on the zoo board. As everybody knows, Brendan Wiley officially last week was his last after 13 years with the zoo. He is no longer the director. Fawn Mosier has now been, uh, along with sort of Fred Patton, who's the, the president there, sort of the co-interims. Fawn has the official interim title. Fred is kind of her assistant, if you will. Um, but I guess I want you folks to know and the public to know is a um, search firm has been officially engaged they are a search firm that specializes in helping zoos, aquariums, animal facilities find directors as opposed to just sort of a more general search firm. Um, that process is underway, and they will, similar like we are with their city manager process, in the next several months be accepting those 
um, applications and doing interviews for that position. So that is where the zoo is at with their process. All right. Now I'm done. Promise. Uh, I will pause 10 seconds to make sure you're done now. Thank you, uh, Councilman. Councilwoman Hofer. I had one thing I wanted to say. I was all, I was at the uh, ceremony this afternoon, and I just wanted to mention we have seven new officers that have joined the police department, and they are Austin Bryant, Darren Canty, Nathan Davis, Hayden Huseman, Austin Cleseth, Miguel Ramirez, and Dalton Ware. So congratulations to them, and good for us. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Hiller. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, personally wanted to offer condolences to Mayor Padilla as well. This is a bittersweet evening and, and morning for him tomorrow and his family. Uh, congratulations to Glenda Washington from the Greater Topeka Chamber of Commerce. She's been doing minority business and minority and women business and entrepreneurial development for us for the last 10 or so years and she retired. Um, Last week, I think Thursday, there was a, an event that Greater Topeka Partnership hosted for her today, uh, right before our meeting, and, and another one coming up this weekend. But she has certainly contributed a lot to our community. I want to echo the um, invitations that my colleague, uh, Councilwoman Nager, put out for holiday events. Um, a couple to add to that list are one that I'm involved in, Topeka United's Peace, a Multicultural Holiday Evening, which will be at... First Methodist Church next Wednesday evening at, at 7 p.m. Um, also, there is there are events at Old Prairie Town and really all over Topeka. So I wanted to refresh that the Topeka 365 um, Facebook page and website is up and running with Visit Topeka. And you can find generally five or six events a day on that. So personally and for guests to check Topeka 365. Also, 785 Magazine has partnered with Arts Connect, and so through that partnership, you can check a 785 Magazine event listing and also find social and community events pretty much at any time. <coughs> uh, the Red Stocking Breakfast is a, a sponsored by KCSL every year. That's this Saturday morning. And um, I was looking for the exact date and couldn't find it on my calendar real quick, but Cornerstone has just announced that they have finished a new construction house at 506 Fillmore, and that was done with ARPA funds that, that we helped provide um, due to, to COVID, and that, that property is finished and, and ready to occupy, and I believe it's targeted at, at unsheltered populations. So thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Valdivia Alcala. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Just wanted to say a couple of things in relation to homelessness slash unsheltered slash encampments. Um, I was asked to be part of a panel, the KSNT, and I, Rebecca Chung was the moderator. Uh, it was myself, Dr. Bob Beatty from Washburn University, and also Representative, House Representative Francis Auerkamp who's the representative for St. Mary's. This was not a debate. What this really was is a half an hour or more of questions about where we're at on the ground in the city with dealing with um, this crisis. Beatty's interjecting from, you know, from his political science realm. And then Francis Auerkamp, since he is the representative that's is more or less leading the charge with these exploratory committees to get a better handle on what is happening across Kansas with the unsheltered and homeless and et cetera. I'm glad it wasn't a debate because, you know, Representative Auerkamp and myself, we've gotten to know each other. Um, I think it's going to be very eye-opening to watch it because I think, to me, it foretells maybe some of the challenges with the legislative agenda that we have set forth with some of the challenges we may be running into. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying we need to be ready because we know that we have a case. We know that we're going to need 
I'm sure some funding somewhere along the road, places like Wichita, Kansas City, Hutchinson, et cetera, are gonna need funding. And I was a bit disappointed at how hard and fast Representative Auerkamp was on this is a local issue. Um, and my way of looking at it is if we all go down the drain, it's going to be the state of Kansas and not just Topeka, Kansas. Um, the other thing is, is that I wanted to let Oakland folks know, for those that I haven't talked to and they have not not seen the Oakland page and those uh, on the uh, west side of the uh, Sardu Bridge, is that I had taken pictures of the absolutely horrendous nature of the encampments uh, along along the river, uh, right there to both the, um, I always get those directions mixed up, north and south uh, of the Sardu Bridge. We all understand that we're on a hover mode uh, with figuring out how we're going to handle this until the new uh, council is seated. However, as I stated to city manager and to code enforcement and to city attorney, what came out of that meeting where we decided to sit on the dialogue and not move on dialogue is that we were going to enforce the ordinances that were on the books. And so the focus, because of pushing, is going to start being as well with all of the other things that we're dealing with, with the encampments and the unsheltered and uh, not abiding by code enforcement, you know, Crime, petty crimes, et cetera, trespassing, et cetera, et cetera, is that that is now on code enforcement's radar, uh, engaging with public works, trying to come up with a schedule that the city manager will then give me because something is going to be done with these camps because there is still structures that are up that should not be up. Those should be taken down. And uh, it, it was designated after review of code enforcement of a definite uh, unsanitary conditions and public health and safety. So I just wanted District 2 folks to know that yes, help is on the way, even if we're not moving right now on if we're gonna have a designated camping spot, we still deserve as a district to have this dealt with and that is being dealt with as we speak and a plan being formulated. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Ortiz. No comments. Okay. De Deputy Mayor, po point of personal privilege. Yeah, go ahead. I, I do have one more thing. Don't throw. <laughs> I'm not there, so you, so you can't throw anything at me. No. No, go so ahead. I was just told, and I should have been more aware of this, that last night you had a, you, you were honored may not be the right word, as you have decided to step back and finally retire, as some of us have heard you claim for several years. And while while you are certainly not leaving our council, um, and your all of your knowledge is not going anywhere, I know that you will certainly be missed in that role. Um, that you've done very well for many years, both as a great partner with the city, and the work that, that Bartlett and West has done with us here in Topeka, and the importance it has meant. So I would be remiss if we didn't say something. Congratulations! I don't know when your final day is; it doesn't matter. But congratulations to you, and felt like it deserved a one last mention as we leave this evening. So thank you, Deputy Mayor. I, I appreciate that, Councilman. It was uh, a bittersweet evening. I do work uh, through the end of the month. Uh, we had the we had the uh, thing last night just because uh, we had some folks in town. But yeah, I woke up this morning thinking, do I really have to go to work now after that? But <laughs> but I did. So but I, I appreciate the kind words. Um, I do have just a couple of things. I'd like to ask the chief to uh, come forward if he would, and while he's uh, coming up. I, all, I want to echo what uh, I think some others have already said and just condolences to the mayor. Tough, tough week. Uh, um, my mother died at, at the exact same age of 93 a couple of years ago, and it doesn't matter how old they are. It's, it's a world of memories, and so I know he's going through a tough time, him and his family, and uh, we'll keep them in our thoughts. Um, and I also wanted to congratulate Glenda Washington. She's done so much for... Uh, for this city and for uh, the greater Topeka partnership. Uh, she's gonna enjoy retirement and uh, she should. Uh, Chief, I understand, uh, just following up on the 
ceremony today. I was unable to make it because of a all day meeting. Uh, uh, not too many more of those left, thank God. Uh, <laughs> but I understand uh, the ceremony was great, and you had uh, you had a special uh, speaker there today. Yeah, I, I, I just I appreciate you calling me forward. Uh, it, I think we'd be remiss as much praise as we got for the ceremony, which which I appreciate, and I know all of the council has attended those graduations, which which means a great deal to the public safety team, not just the police, but fire chief and I were back talking about it too. It makes a difference to the troops, so thank you all for showing up. Um, but today's graduation, we had the keynote speaker, our very own Amanda Stanley. And, and I can tell you, she did a fantastic job. I've, I've seen a lot of keynote speeches, but none as impactful as what I saw today. Um, and, and I'd like to repeat here what I said there so that it's kind of part of this record too. But after 30 years in law enforcement, I thought I understood what courage was, but I didn't. Um, I learned another lesson in that book today, not only just the life that Amanda has led, but the openness and generosity to which she shared in front of that crowd of people was something that I think was even more courageous than all the things that she's endured. So I, I just appreciated the opportunity to, to come forward, but I, I thought we'd be remiss if we didn't uh, at least acknowledge one of our own who did a fantastic job today and was very impactful on uh, not only the young officers at the graduation, but also on the senior command staff that was there in attendance. So thank you, man. Absolutely. Thank you, Chief. Courage. Yeah. Courage uh, shows up in, in many different formats. So we appreciate that. Appreciate your work. And Councilman. And I'm sorry, Deputy Mayor, I guess the point of personal privilege as well. You got it. I just, I work with several of your colleagues, and I just want to say for the record, they said you haven't worked there in a couple of years. Yeah. So, so. so I, I get the goodwill from Councilman Duncan, and then and then you have to end it with that. Thank you very much. You got to set up the job. Yeah. They probably did say that, matter of fact. I actually, actually, after 17 years, they found me out. So, uh, I'll give you a list. There you go. All right, if there's uh, no further business before this uh, body, we are adjourned. <laughs>